Discover Lake Mitron, a lake that turns animals to stones. Hello, Displorers. Welcome to another informative video presented to you by Displorer, and thanks for watching. In this video, we shall take a picnic to Lake Mitron, but make sure you take a body so along because we shall need protection as this lake is noted to turn its animals to stones. In 2011, when he was traveling to shoot photos for a new book on the disappearing wildlife of East Africa, across the ravaged land, photographer Nick Brandt came across a truly astounding place, a natural lake that seemingly turns all sorts of animals into stone. When I saw those creatures for the first time alongside the lake, I was completely blown away, says Brandt. The idea for me instantly was to take portraits of them as they were alive. This pink body of water is a huge attraction, both to humans as well as birds, especially pink flamingos, who flock to the lake area, but most of these birds meet their death as soon as they touch the lake water. They are turned to stones, which can be kept for long, and the reason for this peculiar lake's characteristic lies in its water. In this video, we shall look into this spectacular beauty, full of danger in the Eastern Africa, and why it acts the way it does. If you are new here, welcome! Be sure to subscribe and turn notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. The Basics of Lake Netron Lake Netron is a salt or soda lake in Arusha region in the Tanzanian Gregory Rift, which is the eastern branch of the East African Rift. This lake is within the Lake Netron Basin, a Ramsar site wetland of international significance. At the southern half of Lake Nitron, Fort Scarves and Galai Volcano can also be seen, as well as numerous near white salt cross rafts pepper the shallowest parts of the lake. The lake is fed principally by the southern Iwasu Ngiro River, which rises in central Kenya, and by the mineral rich hot springs. It is quite shallow, less than 3 meters deep, and varies in width depending on its water level. The lake is a maximum of 57 kilometers long and 22 kilometers wide. Why Lake Natron is so ghastly? The surrounding area receives irregular seasonal rainfall, mainly between December and May, totaling 800 millimeters per year with temperatures at the lake frequently above 40 degrees centigrade. With such high temperature, it has led to high evaporation rates in the lake. High levels of evaporation have left behind natron or sodium carbonate decahydrate and trona or sodium sesquicarbonate dehydrate. These deposits of sodium carbonate was once used in Egyptian mummification. The alkalinity of the lake can reach a pH of greater than 12. The surrounding bedrock is composed of alkaline, sodium-dominated trachyte lavas that were laid down during the Pleistocene period. The lavas have significant amounts of carbonate, but very low calcium and magnesium levels. This has allowed the lake to concentrate into a caustic alkaline brine. The ghastly Lake Natron is a salt lake, meaning the water flows in but doesn't flow out, so it can only escape by evaporation. Over time, as water evaporates, it leaves behind high concentrations of salt and other minerals, like at the Dead Sea and Uta's Great Salt Lake. Unlike those other lakes though, Lake Natron is extremely alkaline, due to high amounts of the chemical natron in the water, which gives the water its very high pH of about 12, that is nearly as high as ammonia. And as you might expect, few creatures live in the harsh waters, as it is home to just a single fish species, the Alcolapia latilabris, some algae and a colony of flamingos that feeds on the algae and breeds on the shore. The surface of the lake can also be very deceitful from above, as it looks like empty space. This causes migrating birds to frequently crash into the lake's surface. Brandt theorizes that the highly reflective chemical dense waters act like a glass door, fooling birds into thinking they're flying through empty space, and not long ago, a helicopter pilot tragically fell victim to the same illusion, and his crashed aircraft was rapidly corroded by the lake's waters. During dry season, when the water recedes, the birds desiccated as chemically preserved carcasses wash up along the coastline. These chemically preserved bird and animal carcasses can be collected as finely preserved specimens, which are extraordinarily beautiful to see. 
Even human contact is also dangerously painful, which is why nobody dares to swim in the lake ever. Lake Nechuan in Tanzania is one of the most serene lakes in Africa, but is also the source of some of the most phantasmagorical photographs ever captured, as images that look as though living animals had instantly turned to stone. Despite some media reports, the animals didn't simply turn to stone and die after coming into contact with the lake's water. In fact, Lake Nechuan's alkaline waters support a thriving ecosystem of salt marshes, freshwater wetlands, flamingos, and other wetland birds, tilapia, and the algae on which large flocks of flamingos feed. Photographer Nick Brandt has captured hunting images of the lake and its dead in a book titled Across the Ravaged Land, Abrams Books 2013. Lake Nechuan is one of two alkaline lakes in that area of East Africa. The other lake is Lake Bahi, and if you would like an in-depth look of this beautiful lake too, let us know in the comment section, and we will do all to grant your wish. Both are terminal lakes that do not drain out to any river or sea, both fed by hot springs and small rivers. The isolated lake which wasn't even discovered by Europeans until 1954 has no protections in place for it or its threatened flamingo population, which is a call of concern given it is made up of great flora and fauna treasures, which need to be protected for the future of the ecosystem. Flora of Lake Natron The color of the lake is characteristic of those where very high evaporation rates occur. As water evaporates during the dry season, salinity levels increase to the point that salt-loving microorganisms begin to thrive. Such halophile organisms include some cyanobacteria that make their own food with photosynthesis as plants do. The red accessory photosynthesizing pigment in the cyanobacteria produces the deep reds of the open water of the lake and the orange colors of the shallow parts of the lake. The alkali salt crust on the surface of the lake is also often colored red or pink by the salt-loving microorganisms that live there. Salt marshes and freshwater wetlands around the edges of the lake do support a variety of plants. Fauna of Lake Natron Besides the peculiar flora of Lake Natron, it also has a great fauna species, adaptive to its natural environment. Most animals find the lake's high temperature of up to 60% and its high and variable salt content inhospitable, but nonetheless, Lake Natron is home to some endemic algae, invertebrates, and birds. In the slightly less salty water around its margins, some fish can also survive. The lake is the only regular breeding area in East Africa for the 2.5 million lesser flamingos, whose status of near-threatened results from their dependence on this one location. When salinity increases, so do cyanobacteria, and the lack can also support more nests. These flamingos, the single large flock in East Africa, gather along nearby saline lakes to feed on spirulina, a blue-green algae with red pigments. Lake Natron is a safe breeding location because its caustic environment is a barrier against predators trying to reach their nests on seasonally forming evaporite islands. Greater flamingos also breed on the mud flats. The lake has inspired a nature documentary, The Crimson Wing, Mystery of the Flamingos by Disney Nature, for its close relationship with the lesser flamingos as their only regular breeding area. Two endemic fish species, the alkaline tilapias, Alcolapia latilabres, and A. dalalani, also thrive in the waters at the edges of the hot spring inlets. A. alcalica is also present in the lake, but is not endemic. Threats and Preservation The area around the salt lake is not inhabited, but there is some herding and some seasonal cultivation. Threats to the salinity balance from increased siltation influxes will come from more projected logging in natron watersheds and a planned hydroelectric power plant on the Iwaso Ngiru across the border in Kenya. Although development plans include construction of a dike at the north end of the lake to contain the fresh water, the threat of dilution to this breeding ground may still be serious. A new threat to Lake Natron is the proposed development of a soda ash plant on its shores. The plant would pump water from the lake and extract sodium carbonate to convert to washing powder for export. Accompanying the plants would be housing for 1,000 workers, 
and a coal-fired power station to provide energy for the plant complex. In addition, there is a possibility that developers may introduce a hybrid branch stream to increase the efficiency of extraction. According to Chris Margin, the RSPB's International Officer for Africa, the chance of the lesser flamingos continuing to breed in the face of such mayhem are next to zero. This development will leave lesser flamingos in East Africa facing extinction. 75% of the world's lesser flamingos are born on Lake Natron. Currently, a group of more than 50 East African conservation and environmental institutions are running a worldwide campaign to stop the planned construction of the solar ash factory by Tata Chemicals Limited of Mumbai, India and National Development Corporation of Tanzania. The group working under the umbrella name of Lake Natron Consultative Group is being coordinated by Ken Mwathi, Conservation Program Manager at BirdLife International's Africa Secretariat. As per communication on June 2008, Tata Chemicals shall not proceed with the Natron project and further re-examination of this project will be subject to the Ramsar Wetlands Plan, which is currently under preparation. Because of its unique biodiversity, Tanzania named the Lake Natron Basin to the Ramsar list of wetlands of international importance on 4 July 2001. The lake is also the World Wildlife Fund East African Halophytic Ecoregion. Tourism Potentials There are a number of campgrounds near the lake, which is also the base for climbing Aldonio Lenge. Lake Nation has immense tourist attraction potentials that are important for ecotourism development. However, lack of a general management plan, inadequate funding at the operational level, lack of mechanisms to secure a fair distribution of ecotourism benefits, and poorly developed tourism infrastructural facilities to support diverse segments of tourists were identified as the main challenges associated with the management of ecotourism in the area. But with the work being done by the preservation organizations in Tanzania, the tourist potentials of the lake can still